I try to keep my electronics workbench clean, but the way I accomplish that is I throw all the loose stuff in a bucket. And when that bucket fills up, then I gotta organize it. I'm always impressed when I watch Adam Savage and he's got everything organized into these boxes behind him. Even Casey Neistat did a whole video on how he organizes stuff into these red boxes on the wall. So I wanted to see if I could do something like that with my electronics. I'll explain it all on today's Film It Friday. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. On a recent trip to the Dollar 25 store, I found these boxes. They're really nice with a covered locking lid. So I thought maybe I can use these to make some storage. So I grabbed 10 of them, went to the front counter, and dollar $1.25, just $12.50 plus tax, not bad. The dividers are permanent, but the size is perfect. You can put a whole programmer in one. I can do a breadboard circuit, stick it in another. Big items like a speaker or a fan can fit in this, plus a bunch of other compartments that I can put smaller stuff or 3D print inserts. And then I can even fit this circuit board, which is a development board I use with the programmer. And speaking of circuit boards, did you know that you can get 10 circuit boards for only $5 plus shipping from PCBWay.com? I use them all the time. You can even get assembly services where they'll solder things together for you. They also offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. But I use them mostly for circuit boards. You just go to Instant Quote, upload your Gerber file, Tell them all the features you want, what color silk screen, things like that. They'll give you an instant quote and you can purchase it. Cost me about $25 to ship to the U.S., so $30 for 10 boards, that's a great deal. So check out PCBWay.com. Once I got the boxes home, I needed to make some brackets to mount it to the wall. So I took some dimensions of the back corner and I came up with a little sketch of what I wanted it to look like. Then I went to Tinkercad and made a box about the same size as what I measured, just slightly bigger. Then I made a solid box with dimensions slightly larger than that, and then I went and rounded the edges at a one millimeter radius to give me a nice look. Then I combined the two like this, and then at the back I put two holes for mounting screws. So then I grouped everything together to create the bracket that I'm going to use. And this is universal. It can go on either side of the box. And the screws are for mounting to the wall, so it should look like this. I'm going to print it on my K1 Max because I want to print a bunch of them. And this thing prints really good. I'm going to use a Yorka slicer and orientate them like this and print a bunch of them. And I'm going to use my profile for the K1 Max I've been working on at a 0.28 layer height. With this orientation, no supports needed. should be pretty straightforward and 12 of them will print in six hours and four minutes. The quality I get out of my K1 Max is really, really good. Here's a close up. You can see there's no layer lines that's real visible. It's very smooth. I mean, this is a basic print, but the quality is excellent. But the question is, will it fit? So if I got my dimensions right and this thing printed to those dimensions, these should fit a little bit snug. And they slide on, I can feel they are snug, when I tip it, they don't fall, they don't slip. If I shake it a little bit, upside down, they stay in place. So this looks great. To mount these, I'm going to use some 1-inch drywall screws, two on each bracket. I'll use a long screwdriver bit and also a level to make sure everything's set. Now, I was careful with the first two, and I'm just drilling into the drywall. So I'm being really careful, but it's pretty solid, and I got the first one perfectly level. So from there, I could just clamp to the previous one and screw the rest in place. I was a little worried that the bottom one might be loose, but it wasn't. Each one fit really, really snug. And I like these boxes a little bit better than the storage drawers to the right. So this is gonna give me a nice option to store my electronics. And I look at this and I just wanna go get more cases and print more brackets so I can make a full wall just like Adam and Casey did. And now the fun part. I gotta go through this bucket and sort everything. And I'm gonna try to sort it like switches in one or switch sensors and then micros in another. So I'm organized, but that's for another day. But it's definitely gonna allow me to keep my bench clean and that's what I want. A special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, I could not keep this channel going. So thank you very much. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.